Welcome Istinome. A few days from now on 26th of February there will be a community call on the Ethereum development community and they will decide things on the EIP 1559 proposal and talk about it in that call. And this uh, proposal if it actually gets passed it should bring the Ethereum gas fees down as well as make Ethereum more deflationary so improving the uh, Ethereum do tokenomics. Overall a lot of people have placed high hopes on this and often I see in my comments people commenting about this like hey don't talk about Binance Smart Chain don't talk about other smart chains because Ethereum EIP1559 is just behind the corner. So I just have new news about this situation here basically it just came out today I will talk about that I will talk about what the heck is this proposal uh, how big of an effect will this actually have and well when will this get implemented and will it actually stop the capital flight away from Ethereum into other smart chains or not. Anyway, uh, this actually is proposed by the Ethereum developers themselves, but the miners of Ethereum network are actually opposed to this proposal because supposedly this should bring the uh, gas fees down, so the miner revenue should go down as well. So miners are against this, but personally I think it will get eventually passed because Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, is behind this proposal here and it's already been in the works for two years already, but they're still talking about it they still haven't decided whether or not they will actually implement it or not. But let's talk about the actual proposal here, what it should bring to the Ethereum network if it gets passed. So currently, the minimum bids on the Ethereum network if you pay gas are between 100, 1 and 100 nano ETH. But sometimes you have to pay over 100 nano ETH or even higher than 200 nano ETH for your gas fees. And currently, sometimes you have to wait several blocks for your transactions to be broadcasted in the uh, blockchain. And currently the miners, they can choose the highest paying transactions, which usually leads to people paying too much for the gas fees as well. So overall, if it gets passed, the network will have a slightly higher fees when the network is congested. But when the network congestion goes down, the fees will also go down slightly. So there will be an automatic fee balancing structure that will prevent people from overbidding and uh, the gas fees shouldn't spike as high as they do currently. So currently if you pay like 30% th uh, $30 per transaction, but sometimes you see like $150 per transaction, you shouldn't see that high spikes. So it should stabilize the gas fees when it gets, gets passed. Also, it will allow wallets to auto set the gas fees for users in a highly reliable fashion. So it should help people with the um, usage of the wallets so you don't have to micromanage your gas fees yourself and it should accurately give you the better price for that. And from uh, this proposal the base fee from the gas fee will always be burned and thus counterbalancing the Ethereum inflation and bringing the Ethereum network to be a little bit more deflationary. And finally it will also increase the block size. It will uh, pretty much double the block size. So it will go from 12.5 million uh, gas per block to 25 million gas per block. But the average block size should still remain about the same without this EIP. So this increased block size will only be used when the uh, network co uh, gets congested so that they have more throughput during the times of congestion. But overall it shouldn't be the case that they will make more transactions overall. So from this when I was reading about this I don't really see how this will overall affect the gas prices by a mile at least and that's the same conclusion that Finematics came in his uh, proposal here. He's basically explaining the whole situation better than I am but overall his um, ending here says the same, th same thing that the gas fees are probably not gonna go down. And that's also when you were, are looking at any of the uh, interviews from the Ethereum developers, they're saying the same thing, that the gas fees are a side effect from this. So I'm not expecting much uh, drop in the gas fees, but all, uh, overall I think the gas fees are not going to spike as high as before. Maybe it will somewhat reduce the gas fees in the short term, but eventually I think the network will get congested again, like I've explained in a previous video as well. So can this stop the capital flight when the, when it gets passed? 
Uh, personally, I don't think so, because even if the gas fees are $30 on average, I think newcomers will not use Ethereum for $30 per transaction. So I think newcomers will go into other blockchains that have cheaper transactions, like Binance Smart Chain and other chains out there as well. But from this research, I wanted to make sure and know if the Ethereum can actually pump from this news also, because I want to be there when the liquidity is coming to a new network. But Ethereum from now, from this, what I was researching, it's, it's not looking good for Ethereum. But when it actually gets passed, I think in the short term it can pump. But here's the big news that just happened. And this is the, the, the latest update. So this just came in 11 hours ago. So this is made by the core developer of this EIP-1559 standard. And his name is uh, Tim Bako. You can follow him on uh, Twitter. And he just posted this uh, 10 hours ago on Twitter as well. Anyway, he's saying here and uh, this one. So even though they have the call on 26th of February, they will have they will cover this topic again in all core devs call on March 5th. But that doesn't guarantee will come to a decision right then. And if they come to a decision on March 5th, then it will likely go to live mainnet by the end of the summer. So even if this gets passed, it will have no effect until maybe August of this year. So overall, I think Ethereum is going to be pretty much out of this bull run for the remainder of the bull run. And even if this gets passed, uh, the only hope that Ethereum has is the Ethereum 2.0 scaling solutions. But personally, I consider like XDAI and Matic, which are layer two blockchains for Ethereum, to be considered as their own networks and not really a layer two solutions. So overall, I think the potential of Ethereum network is not going to be here for us for 2021. It's going to be other blockchains out there. And that's one of the reasons why I've been in the Binance Smart Chain. I think the capital flight will still go on to the Binance Smart Chain and into the other blockchains like Cardano. They will release or are supposed to release their smart contracts on March. And also CRO is supposed to launch their uh, smart chain on March as well. So we'll see how much uh, liquidity they can attract. Also Polkadot is launching this year. Then you have the uh, Solana, you have Matic, you have XDAI, and you have Avalanche, you have ThorChain, you have a lot of different blockchains out there, even Zilliqa and uh, eGold. By the way, eGold is probably a pretty decent buy at these levels. Just noticed that, by the way. Uh, just not financial advice, of course, but uh, I think this is going to be a, a pretty nice pick if you want to get some e-gold. Anyway, a lot of new blockchains are coming into the space. I don't think Ethereum will be a good choice for 2021. Just from this news alone, that if it gets passed on March 5th, it will still take until the end of summer before this EIP-10559 gets passed. And even if it gets passed, it doesn't have that much of an effect anyways. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Consider subscribing and I will see you on the next video.